You're watching the Dallas Cowboys Report. I am your host, Tom Downey, here with the latest news and rumors around America's team. And we begin with, where else can we begin? But the offense, is it broken right now? Yes. Yes, it is. Four stars on this one. The Cowboys offense, across the board, to its core, is broken at the current moment. They have gone from a top three at worst unit to begin the season with a top three quarterback, a top three play caller, a top three ground game, top three receiving core, top three offensive line to they are being carried by their defense, which is something none of us thought was going to be the case. The entire offense, the quarterback, the play caller, all of it is struggling right now. There is plenty of blame to correctly go around. Whoever you're blaming in the comment section, you're correct, as long as it is multiple pieces of blame being assigned at the current moment. Jerry Jones was asked today, hey, this, is that going to slump? I think Jerry's answer was correct. Quote, I don't want to say that slump, but that's probably fair. But it's such a multifaceted evaluation that I would say our offense is definitely going away from where we were playing five and six games ago from the standpoint of production. Jerry's right. Dak unquestionably gets blame here. The entire offense is not working. It truly is broken at the current moment. It went from being awesome to can anybody stop this unit to can the offense get out of their own damn way? Because I don't know if it's an opposing defense thing. I think it's the Cowboys themselves causing themselves issues at the current moment. So what we all want even if we have disagreeing ways around how to get there, is we want to make the Cowboys offense great again. So spam it in the comments. M-C-O-G-A, Goga. Make the Cowboys offense great again. And as I mentioned, it is an entire unit issue right now. Dak Prescott is in a slump, especially if you look at his last two second halves. He was, he was awful. He's missing throws he usually hits. You can wonder if it is an injury. That's fair. But we've seen him still make the high-level throws he's made in the past. It's not consistently. And against Washington, he's made just some stupid-ass decisions he does not normally make. The play calling has regressed as well. It's a bit cowardly. I think it's poor. They've run the ball up the middle when it's clearly not working. The receivers, by the way, they're running the wrong routes, and they're dropping passes they should not be making. Yes, Dak has to be better. Kellen Moore has to be better. Your receivers, your highly touted receiving core, has to fare better as well. There was a, a play uh, um, in the second half, the first half, in which they ran a simple smash concept uh, with the slot receiver going was supposed to run the, the, the post, and uh, I think it was Lamb or somebody did a hitch, and they both ran hitches within five yards of each other. Uh, it was just. It was on the receivers, and there's no way around it. The offensive line has regressed as well. I don't really know why the Cowboys have not turned back to Connor Williams. McGovern's not it. The ground game, by the way, is still not good. You're averaging under four yards a carry. You are a bottom three run unit right now. What I'm saying is, is this. Assign blame to everything and everyone because they are all, at some level, whatever percentage you want to assign, responsible. That includes the quarterback. That includes Boy Wonder Kellen Moore. That includes Zeke. The vaunted, overhyped offensive line. Even their great receiving core. They all assign some blame here. And McCarthy, also a part of that. Now, will the Cowboys fix their offense? We know what they can do. Can they get back to it, though, is the question. This is the pinned comment on today's video. So if the ad break comes here on YouTube, take advantage of it. Scroll down, type in Y for yes or N for no. Next up is Terrence Steele, going to start at left tackle while Tyrants with his out for a game or maybe more. Four stars on this one. Uh, credit, I, I'll do this, credit uh, to Jerry Jones for once again revealing the secret sauce of what the Cowboys are going to do on the offensive line. Jerry said Tuesday morning that, hey, Terrence Steele is going to start at left tackle. Now, I will make note that Ty Secchi replaced Tyron Smith last week. That it was instead Smith, or, or excuse me, Nseki that, that took over uh, for the Dallas Cowboys at the left tackle position. Now, Steele, simply put, is not as good at left tackle as he is at right tackle. But with Tyron Smith set to miss at least a game, 
and potentially maybe more. Ty, or Jerry Jones said it was not a season-ending inju injury that he thought Smith would be back before the end of the season. I'm hoping for the Cardinals game. That's a lot to ask for, but that's about when I would want him back. That has massive seeding implications. Hopefully Tyron's back around them. We'll spend some more time here on the offensive line. Before that, though, today's show, powered by our sportsbook partner, BetUS. You can get a 125% deposit bonus when you go to chatsports.com slash bet and you use promo code COWBOYS125. And until kickoff of the Cowboys game against the Giants, we're bringing back the Jersey deal because it's the holiday season. We're feeling generous. And even though the Cowboys are 9-4, and four, we could all use a pick-me-up in some capacity. Now, we got two jerseys available for you guys. Now, you got to follow the rules, right? Use promo code COWBOYS125 at chatsports.com slash bet. Sign up and deposit at least $100. That'll get you a 125% deposit bonus. If you want in on that deal, email us jersey at chatsports.com. I'll put that email in the comment section and in the description. That is jersey at chatsports.com. We've got Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott jerseys available for you guys. Email us and follow the instructions you'll get when you email us if you want in on that deal. The Cowboys offensive line will be in relatively decent shape, you know, Speaking to that, that, that perspective, I suppose, in the end. Tyron's out this week, so Terrence Steele slots in at left tackle. I'll make note on Lyle Collins here, by the way. Uh, reports from both Michael Gelkin and Ian Rapport. Collins will not be suspended for his defense after the whistle of Dak Prescott, which I didn't think it was a dirty hit, just so we're clear. But that's where we're at at the current moment. And I would love to see Connor McGovern benched. He's not playing all that well. But back to Steele. There is a very clear difference in him at left tackle versus right tackle. The sacks have only come on the left side of the offensive line, although there have been some bad reps on the right side. The hits and the hurries in less than half the snaps from the left side. The run grade, vastly better on the right side, although part of that might be who's been in there at left guard as well. So what is your confidence level in Terrence Steele at left tackle. Scale it for me 1 to 10. 1 being you've got no confidence, you think he sucks. 10 being I think he's the best player in the entire NFL. It's somewhere in the middle, maybe a little bit closer from 1 to 10. I want you guys to subscribe if you want the Cowboys to beat the Giants. We have, by the way, surpassed the actual New York Giants YouTube channel for subs. S suck it, Mara. That's all I got to say right there. Hit that big red button and subscribe today. Will the Cowboys get the number one seed? I'm going to give this one star, but I'm saying there's a chance right now. If the, Cow if the Cowboys can get into multi-team tiebreaker scenarios, they're actually in pretty good spot to pull that off. As they sit right now, they are a game back of the one, two, and three seeds. And they play the three seed later on this year, the Arizona Cardinals. Now, the Rams are also kind of lurking in that category as well, so keep that in mind. But because the Cowboys' losses have been to the AFC, if it comes down to uh, conference record, which is the go-to tiebreaker, Dallas could get that number one seed. Now, I'm going to guess that they lose one more game down the stretch, but there is a chance that Dallas can win out and secure that number one seed. I love to use the New York Times uh, playoff simulator. These are their odds as things sit right now, factoring in records, schedule opponents, all that stuff, tiebreakers. Bucks and Packers, your favorites. That makes sense. The Cowboys at 15%, or the Cardinals at 15%, Dallas at 7%. Now, if the Cowboys win this week, that bumps up to like 10. And if they beat the Cardinals, it's a massive jump. So there is a chance for Dallas because this schedule is not that tough. Arizona is going to be a tough game because they're a better team on the road than they are at home for whatever reason. And maybe you get into a situation where you've secured something in terms of you're either the four seed or the three seed or two seed or whatever, and you don't have anything to play for against Philadelphia. But 
two, there could be very well two playoff teams on this list, either Washington or Philly and then Arizona. So what seed will the Cowboys end up getting? One, two, three, or four are your options. Dallas is basically a, two games away from winning the division, locking it up officially. This is their division outside of a historic collapse. They're at 99% to win it. It's over. What seed will Dallas get? Get those predictions in for me right now in the comments section. Looking at the postseason awards here, Micah Parsons for Defensive Player of the Year. Two stars on this one. Um... Producer Jeremy, the Eagles fan, saying, eh, two and a half. I don't hate it. Um, the Defensive Player of the Year award is hype-based, it's stat-based, and Parsons is making a run at that perspective as of late. Unquestionably, he is a legitimate threat to win the award, the first rookie to do it if he pulls it off since somebody named Lawrence Taylor. Now, I will say this. I still think Parsons has a tricky path to winning the award, but if he keeps doing what he's done the past couple games, I mean, this level of production is insane. 75 tackles, 12 sacks, 17 tackles for loss, three forced fumbles. This is unquestionably defensive player of the year production. That's a big deal for Dallas. The issue is there are two other players who are also putting up this level of production. Miles Garrett of the, of the Cleveland Browns, who has been awesome this year, and TJ Watt, who, by the way, has been just as good as Garrett in a fewer snaps. So these are your three clear-cut contenders. Sorry, Trayvon Diggs. Um, I think the timing of when his INTs came compared to Parsons' recent run I think gives the advantage to Micah Parsons. So what do you guys think? Will Parsons win Defensive Player of the Year in 2021? One for yes, two for no. I've got no complaints saying he's in the conversation, but does he actually win it? Get those votes in for me in the comments. Now, I think Parsons 100 to 1,000% should be in the mix. If you're not putting him in there, you're doing it wrong, just like not including digs like top five is doing it wrong. The issue is the stat-based award and the sack record of 22 and a half sacks is in play for others. That is still a possibility for other edge rushers, namely TJ Watt and Miles Garrett. Watt has 16 sacks in two fewer games than anyone else. He's missed time with injury slash COVID. If he balls out down the stretch or Miles Garrett gets there, I would venture to say one of those two win the award over Micah Parsons and his 12 sacks. But if they don't get there and they've kind of slowed down a little bit, it will give Parsons a chance to do something that would be an historic run for the young rookie linebacker.